Go. Hello everyone, my name is Joy Dayo Dekoya. I am a 200 level law student of the University of Ibadan and I am a current undergraduate intern at Financial Institute. Today I will be discussing with you the environmental protection under menstrual standards for telecommunications and broadcast facilities regulation of 2011. First, what is environmental protection? This is a practice of protecting the natural environment at the individual level at the organizational level and at the government's level for the benefits that is the ultimate survival of the environment and of human beings. Now, NESTRIA is National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency and it was set up by the federal government through the NESTRIA Act of 2007 and Section 34 of that NESTRIA Act empowers the Minister of Environment to make regulations for the protection of the environment. One of such regulations is NESRA Standard for Telecommunications and Broadcast Facilities Regulation of 2011, which I will now refer to as the 2011 Regulations. Now, you may be wondering what telecommunications industry has to do with environmental protection. Well, the services the telecommunication industry provides, like mobile network communication, internet services, uh, media visibility, basically everything we do on our phone, laptops, TV, even radio. Now, to provide these services, they need to set up base transceiver stations all over the country. This is a base transceiver station. This is a base transceiver station as well. And this stations on the master towers tend to pose some environmental health hazards um, such as noise pollution, air pollution, emission of radioactive waves which might be detrimental to human health and this is why NESRA um, came up with the 2011 regulations to prohibit and discourage any activities of the telecommunications and broadcast operators that will be detrimental to the health of, to public health and safety. They also apply the sanctions for um, non compliance with the 2011 regulations. Now, for the purpose of understanding, my colleague here would be a telecommunications provider, MTN. Now, MTN wants to set up a base transceiver station. What are those things you would have to um, take note of to comply with the 2011 regulations? First of all, she has to consider the minimum setback requirements. The minimum setback requirements. Now, the 2011 regulations recommend setting up base transfer stations in commercial areas, but that is not completely feasible. So. To set up BTS sites in residential areas, they have to ensure that the base of the mast or tower is not less than 10 meters from the fence of the nearest residential building. Now, in the case that there is no fence, like in the image here, there must be a minimum setback of 12 meters. Now, this has caused conflict between Nestria and the Nigeria's Communication Commission, NCC. This is NCC. Now, the NCC 2009 guidelines on technical specifications for the installation of BTS masts and towers states a minimum setback requirement of 5 meters. Now, in 2012, this caused a very huge problem because so many, Nestria was reported to have shut down about 52 base transfer stations that did not comply with their 10 to 12 minimum setback. But those base stations complied with NCC's 5 meter setback. So this caused a lot of conflict and affected the quality of service of the communication op operators. So, the Minister of 
Environment and Minister of Communications came together to find a solution to this problem. And by 2014, they had come to the agreement that um, all telecommunication operators should comply with next year's um, minimum setback requirements. But in the case that they cannot comply to that 10 to 12 meter setback due to due to insufficient space, they have to, they have to SEC and Nestria would approve a minimum setback of 7.5 meters. Now moving on, another thing you would have to keep in mind when um, setting up a base transceiver station would be the power generating set requirements. Now, it's no news that the electricity supply situation in Nigeria is very bad. So most, if not all, base transfer stations make use of power generating sets. Now, the 2011 regulation recommends the use of environmental friendly power sources like solar, wind, hydro energy sources. But in case that um, they have to use fossil fuel power generating sets, the um, 2011 regulations has set up seven requirements, seven regulations. First of all, if this base transfer station is located close to a water body or domestic water source, the this is a generator set. This generator set has to be placed 15 meters away from the water source. Number two, if the base transfer station is in the, a residential area, you have to make sure that the power generating set, set is eight meters, at least eight meters away from the nearest residential building from the fence of the nearest residential building, and if there is no fence, it has to be a 10 meter setback. Moving on, we, um, okay, the third requirement for um, setting up power generation sets is that the generator set must be soundproof. Number four, the generator set must be installed properly to minimize vibrations for the environment and for close buying facilities. Number five, you have to, they have to ensure that the exhaust pipe of the generator set is not directly facing any residential building. Now, there is okay. There is a sixth guideline or sixth regulation, which is that the monitoring and recording of the exhaust emissions of power generating sets must, must be done at every service maintenance. And finally, there is the noise permissible levels um, for generator sets. In residential areas, the noise permissible level is 50 decibels during the day and 35 decibels at night. For school or hospital areas, the recommended the specified noise level is 45 decibels during the day and 35 decibels during the night. And for commercial areas, it is 55 decibels during the day and, and 45 decibels at night. Okay, so moving on, we have to consider, she has to consider an environmental audit as well. Now, every base transfer station is subject to an environmental audit once every three years. Now, as a Nestria official, let's as a Nestria official, I can decide to inspect a BTS station from time to time to check for compliance with the 2011 regulations. That's fine. Moving on, in the case that she has already started using a BTS site and she decides that, okay, um, it is not feasible to continue operating this BTS site. I'm going to stop for a while. Nestra, um, 
the 2011 regulation says that if she stops using that site for a period of three years, the site is considered abandoned. So, um, and when a site is considered abandoned or um, operations stop, as uh, operations are stopped on that BCS site, the 2011 regulation says that all, um, it says that the site must be restored to its natural state within six months after operations have stopped or the site has been deemed abandoned. So within that six months, all every the site has to be this mast or tower that has to be disassembled. All the equipment and everything has to be removed from the site and cleared off. Now, uh, we're going to move on to sanctions for non-compliance with 2011 regulations. Now, let's say she or MTN has um, been operating a BTS site and somehow, as an extra official, I come to inspect and I find that, oh, she has breached a rule, a regulation, in 2011 regulations. I, what I'm going to do is write a notice of non-compliance to her and after 14 days of sending her that notice, I will go back and inspect the site to, to check or see if the issue has been resolved. If it hasn't, I will write another letter to her to warn her again and if she still doesn't resolve the issue, I would take that as an offence, as her committing an offence um, and she will be subject to sanctions under the 2011 regulations. The sanction for breaching an offence, breaching the provisions of the regulation would be that she could be fined to a sum of 5 million naira and an additional fine of 50,000 naira for every day the offence subsists. She could also be, she could also be um, given liable to a term, a five-year imprisonment term, and it could also be both to fine and imprisonment. Now, as an extra official, I am empowered by the 2011 regulations to to perform such duties as would ensure compliance with the 2011 regulations. So, in the process of carrying out my duties, like I said earlier, I can perform routine inspections. I can um, decide to take a sample of sites of the sites and whatever to check if the site complies with the 2011 regulations. But to do that. I have to have a certificate of authorization and she has a right to ask me for the certificate of authorization to search her facility or take samples of, from her facility. And in the case that she has breached a rule, a regulation of the 2011 regulation, I can decide to close down the BTS site, I can close down the facility. but. The Nestrious Act of 2007 recommends, also recommends getting a certificate of authorization before closing down a BTS site. And once I get the certificate of authorization, I can close down the site at any point I like. So with all of that said, I hope I've been able to expand on your understanding of environmental protection in the telecoms industry. To learn more, Please visit our site at www.halemsolicitors.com and visit our social media pages at Halem Solicitors on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and the rest. Thank you so much for listening.